I, I will call this listening session of the Bloomington City Council for order. Thank you everybody for being here tonight. I appreciate it. As I said, we've got a full house tonight, and so it's going to be a, a lot of folks. Uh, and it's going to be a short amount of time, and I apologize for that, but we do have a council meeting tonight that we have to get to. We've had a few people who have called in ahead of time, and so we'll get to them first, and we're going to start with uh, Yasmin. Uh, if you could, please, if you could step up. Uh, oh, do you have a chair for... There we go. Thank you. Hi. Hey, um, well, my first name is Elizabeth Yasmin, but I put Jasmine because it's easier to say it. Um, well, I've been here in residence for almost 22 years. On October, I took 23 years on, on my own. So um, it's been now, it's going to be six years since 2018, that I've been struggling a lot by my neighbors that's been harassing me that just moved in to our town. And it's not only harassing me, it's harassing my other neighbors from the front. They're Hispanic and my other neighbor that's African American. So it started with me, just me calling the cops, putting harassment orders over and over and over. Until the point is that my family's um, fear of their life is in danger. Because this person has thrown twice firecrackers in into my house. The last time was May 28th. On May 20, and May 24, they had an agreement that my lawyer, their lawyer, and the um, how you call it, the judge, sit down and agreed on something that everybody's going to leave each other alone. That nobody was going to interfere with anybody. I didn't want to agree on that because I know that he's been in jail a couple times, and it's like not stopping him. He keeps on doing it more and more and more. We agreed on that, and then on May 28, it was 17 firecrackers in to my house, all of them. They were all over my roof, over my uh, driveway, over my backyard, front yard. And one of those firecrackers almost hit two of my kids and my um, daughter's girlfriend and my grandson. They were in the trampoline, and that I have a video of that firecracker passing their heads and hitting my um, neighbor's um, roof from the garage. It's just constantly harassing us. Um, they sent his little daughter conduct not even the violation of the harassment orders um, right now I have another court order coming on Friday because now he placed a harassment um, order against me but I have a lot of proof to prove what he's done to me and my family you know I have multiple videos um, like I told you recently this is the second time he does it through the same wall um, through that same window the first time was um, he was banging the window from his front door like from his window sorry his window from the um, main street he was banging it. You can see it on the on the video. He had his shirt up and bottoms down. And you can like if you zoom the video, you'll see him. He's naked. And then you can see when he turns his shirt down. The last one he got arrested because my two daughters were there. My nine year old and my three year old daughter were there. Same thing when I told you I didn't have my phone and I told my husband was coming out. I was like, hey, I was like, do you have your phone? He's like, yeah. And I was like, why? Oh, because I see a light in that um, um, window. I was like, he's recording me, but because he has not placed the harassment order, I cannot do nothing, but I just can call the cops and make this as another police report. When I look up, he was naked, touching himself. You know, it's not the first time he does it. It's like, I am living in my own home trapped. When I was for 22 years, and this day barely moved on, I think, September of 2015, and it started with hate. It's like... F Mexican, go back to your country. You're not legally to be here. You know, get the F out of here. I'm on, they, he's always screaming, telling my husband he's, um, he's gonna get his visa revoked, telling him um, he's gonna call ICE. Me explaining my little kids at that time, it was four and five. What's ICE? Don't be afraid, daddy's not gonna be deported. You know, it started just like that, but then it got worse and worse and worse every year. I, I apologize for I, 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 I for you. I, I'm empathetic. I certainly am, and and nobody should have to go through that. And I'm sorry you're having to go through that. I, That's why I'm coming here for help because I police are helping me, but not as much because he will get in jail. But then it's over there in downtown that they'll let him go out with just the silly contact. Right now, what I heard, he was a year of probation, and with him doing all that stuff, he's violating. And I have videos of him touching himself and. You know, so you, I, I again, I appreciate your coming. You, you, the city council has heard this. Our city attorney, this is our city manager. Our, our police department obviously now knows. Let us. Uh, I, I know we have your contact information. Let us kind of put the 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 
the collective heads together here in City Hall and figure out what the next steps might be. Yeah, please do. And if just get in contact with De um, Detective Sari, that's one of them. Okay. Um, Officer Van Hall and Officer uh, Wilkins. Okay, good to know. Just please help me out. I'm begging you for my family. That's all. Do what we can. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> all right. Thank you much. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, we ran a little bit long on that because I didn't think it was appropriate to, to, to necessarily cut her off. And I hope you all understand that. I hope that you, that's reasonable. So why don't we get going with the rest of our folks now. Uh, Sally, you were uh, also pre-registered to speak. Okay, as I stated at the last listening session, it is the city being scrutinized and it is not undue. The conditional use permit for the Darrell Fruit property contained two parcels, a 201 park and the alt lot with the address 8200 Chicago. The first map provided to the council is from 1982. It is the Smith Park first edition and there is no outlot. The second is from 1993 Smith Park second edition and an outlot has been added. This is the property identified as the first option to purchase. The third is from 1998 and it is a map of what were the existing conditions. Note that the football field is located within the outlot. The fourth is from November 1998. It is a plan where the football soccer field is moved from south removing some of the parking spaces by the baseball fields. The tennis courts are located on the north end of the field. This plan reflects the current location of the football soccer field. Unfortunately, the outlot was not updated to reflect the change in location of the football soccer field. The outlot should have included the entire property that the city invested in and it did not. The conditional use permit for the Darrell Fruit property was approved May of 2011 and the shared agreement was supposed to be signed September 2011, and yet in the minutes from November 2011, council and staff discussed why there, why there was an outlet, and not one person correctly explains that the outlet was created to represent the city interest in the property. From November 21st, 2011 minutes, Peterson asked, how common is it for outlots to be platted and developed? Johnson replied, it's not uncommon and that most Commonly, outlets are created when there is a future right-of-way use anticipated. When that use is no longer valid, it's common to revert them back to the owner for development. Bernhardson stated, when Bloomington was being developed, it was not uncommon that a property owner would have many acres in their holdings, but would only plat a portion of it and the rest of it would be left as an outlot. Peterson stated, it's possible that many of the lots on the notification map were once outlot lots and were converted from outlot lots to other lots. He said, not promise is made that outlots will not be developed. Wilcox stated it's not uncommon for a large developer to develop what they need and leave the rest as outlots. Again, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay. If you could, if you could forward your comments on to us as you typically do, if you could forward on to us so we, we have the complete uh, text of what you're bringing forward. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, we also have uh, Leo Milkey. Uh, Leo, there he is. He had pre-registered as well. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Leo Malky, and I am a close resident of Jefferson High School, and I'm trying to be a good neighbor to the school. With the current situation regarding the football stadium, it is dev devastating to many residents, especially at the south end of the football field. Those homes are in close proximity to the football field and especially subject to the adverse effects of loud sounds, bright lights, parking, foot traffic, trash in the yards, and the whole ball of wax. You must do something at the south end of the field, south end of the stadium, to mitigate the problems that you've created there. There's a lot of angry residents around the school property, and that's just not hearsay. We've been around, we've been talking to them, and that's their feelings. To add to that, Jefferson currently rents out their facilities to various groups. Renting the school property has created lots of extra, extra undesirable and certainly unnecessary disruption in the neighborhood around the school with added traffic, parking problems, foot traffic, and debris that is not being controlled by Jefferson. Jefferson, Jefferson is apparently doing this because they see an opportunity to make additional money. They should be ashamed of what they are doing to their neighbors. <clears throat> Simply put, they are running a business to make money and consequently they will totally destroy 
the connection they have with their neighbors around the school because of the problems that they're creating. As for all of us, we can watch our property values decrease while Jefferson is busy making money by renting their facilities and ignoring the impact on this residential neighborhood. They should really be ashamed of themselves. It's like pouring fuel on an already well cooking fire. Renting Jefferson's property to others shows considerable respect, disrespect on their part and a total disregard for their neighbors. They should truly be ashamed of the way they are treating their neighbors. I think it is, is, is essential for Jefferson to reconsider their decision regarding the rental of their facility. They should come to the conclusion that they should not rent out their facility to others because it causes more pressure on a residential area already that has, has already too much pressure on it. We are trying to be good neighbors to them, and we expect them in turn to be good neighbors to us. Very good. Thank you. Very quick question. Yeah. Yes. So when I look at the map, there are no residential homes on the south side of the facility. Oh, there's oh oh yeah yeah. yeah there is. Oh, there's there's rent there's rental property there, but there's a whole there's string of homes there. Just like the mar marshy pond area. And that, and that, in that first home that you south. come to, it's, it's elderly people and they're really uh -huh. upset. So like kind of southwest of the stadium. This uh, it's dead south. Okay. Right here. These houses is right in there. Oh, and there's houses here. So right here. Okay. Thank right. you for clarifying that. Thank you, Mr. Melky. Appreciate it. Uh, Lindsay Fry Palmquist. Fry Palmquist. Fry Palmquist. Excuse me. No, that's okay. Hello. Oh. Um, I live on Johnson Circle, which is just north of the tennis courts on the other side of the football field. Um, there's a couple of things in the petition that I wanted to uh, just cover today in case you weren't really having a chance to read through all of that. I know you got a packet that was something like 1100 pages or something, and I'm not really sure how that's supposed to work that you read through that. So I was hoping to recap some of that. Um, the first couple of things I would like to talk about are the things I believe that qualify this for mandatory EAW, which would be the environmental review due to it being a phased action or a connected action. Uh, so a phased action and connected pieces are what are the mandatory requirements. So the first part of that would be um, when they're doing concurrent timelines or whether one project qualifies that the other project has to be there in existence. So um, those are in point one of the petition if that mandatory review is of interest to you. But what I want to talk about further than that is the sound. Um, because I am very concerned about the wildlife in the area, and that happens to include people. But um, I'm an avid birder with my family, and I'm very concerned about the stopover grounds that these natural areas provide on a major flyway. Um, we are very blessed, actually, to have a flyway that is open to this many species of birds, and whether or not you're a birder, um, that is a huge environmental concern and, and points to detrimental impacts. You know, the, the, car the canary in the cave is a... Is a expression kind of for a reason what happens to the birds first often indicates what happens to the rest of the species we have uh, threatened endangered and species of concern in these areas if you look at the minnesota and u.s wildlife federation sites it shows the rusty patch bumblebee monarch butterflies long-eared bats and many others are of concern here all i've asked since kind of the beginning of this is that we just look at it just look at it and make sure we're not going to detrimentally impact these areas or these animals and birds and insects. Um, so my father was a state park naturalist for like almost 40 years. And he once walked with me in that area and said, you should really protect this. And then he happened to just pass away last fall, right before we found out about these final site plans. So I'm a little bit emotionally invested in at least making sure we're doing our due diligence that we do not detrimentally impact these areas. The first thing I want to talk about in that is the sound. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to cut you off okay. because we're trying to get everybody. I understand. Just please review the sound section where I don't sound believe the Venaclas in the study at all proves that it is going to be meeting the ordinances. Will do. Thank you much. Um, we had one more person uh, with two any cars parked all over in the neighborhood. Cars are found in no parking areas, fire lanes, on the grass. Uh, they're blocking the intersection down there on Heritage Hills in France Avenue where the concrete 
lanes are. I got pictures. I think I sent them to you. Uh, the idea of cars parking on Olson has been tried and is not used. I mean, I don't know how you can count parking at a school that is a half mile walk. I mean, you can't cut across the field because of fences and everything. Uh, so most weekends, you'll also see cars from out of state. This is not what it was sold as to us as residents. And then you're not following city code 21.301.06. You got to follow it. High schools are their own classification. You're supposed to use the auditoriums, the gymnasiums, the theaters, and that's the basis of the parking. I calculate it right now. We ought to have 1,470 parking spots. And that's not counting the other square footage that ought to go into the car parking. So you only have 691 between the 109 that are on the east side of Olson and the Jefferson site. So you're short already, and now you're proposing to put a stadium in there, and you're basically telling us more cars are going to come on site. Uh, and really, the school needs to get 100% of their cars on the site. There's an issue already with Jefferson High School kids not taking the bus, and that's on them. Uh, I don't know, I think one thing that would work. I'm sorry, I have to cut you off again. We're, we're trying to make sure everybody gets in here. Okay. And if, if you could email us, I know you've got our, your, our email. I'll you an email today. Uh, but with your remarks as well. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yep. So, all right, thank you. Dad, your dad. I, I worked with your dad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really quickly, Mr. Mayor, yes. a three point of clarification. I believe that, at least in the packet, it says that parking decisions have not yet been made. And, and so there's a study that will happen to confirm how much parking is required. It's, yes? The, the decision we're making tonight is whether or not the environmental. I understand that part. Yes. But that, yep. My understanding is that yes. there's a procedure. The other question I have is are they subject to the same calculations as we are? Uh, like a, a normal residential or commercial property, is it 1.4 per like? I think it's uh, the rolling code section. We answer that during the, the presentation. We, we will answer that during the presentation. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. Please go ahead. Mayor, honorable city council members, imagine a perfect summer's evening. You have you have the dictate. You have. I'm, I'm sorry. Can, can you state your name just so we have it? Catherine Babcock. Thank you. Okay. Imagine a perfect summer's evening. You and your child are walking out in the back hill. Fireflies start to emerge from the grass. Your child runs to interact with them, creating memories for both you and your child. Now imagine a place where those lights are extinguished. The environment is the foundation on which everything prospers. It is also critical in quality of life issues for not only people, but also important for the animals and insects, many of whom are imperiled daily. Due to the climate crisis and diminishing habitat, we no longer have the luxury to disregard our environment. And it's our responsibility to, to include it in every conversation and certainly in every major project. It is well documented that kids need green space and good access to nature. We owe them extra vigilance to make sure this happens so that every decision we make goes beyond the status quo for the environment and to its restoration, growth, and preservation. Voting for an environmental review and environmental assessment worksheet today would align with and demonstrate the City of Bloomington's commitment to actively increase protections for the environment as stated in your own Bloomington strategic objectives and strategies for 2030. It states, quote, the city of Bloomington will achieve significant improvement in the indices measuring the community's environmental and individual health. Supporting an environmental review also aligns with the city of Bloomington's choice to be continuing participants in several high profile environmental programs including Minnesota. Catherine, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. We're, we're just trying to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak this evening. So I'm gonna have to cut you off. I appreciate that we've got your-, your Thank you. Here now. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello. Sorry, I'm kind of nervous, but um, I'm Rosie Morales. Um, that is my mother. And I just wanted to just, please just, 
if you guys can help us. Because it's just too much. I've been, we've been dealing with this for what, five years? Since I was 15, seeing this man's private parts too, it's traumatizing because I feel like I can't live in my own home. Like, I can't even be in my own yard because I, he's always staring at us. Especially because I have little siblings, like, and it's just scary. I just, I just want to help because I'm just tired of it. I have to deal with this constantly every day, him staring at us, him sticking up the middle finger at us for no reason. Like he'll give us this, like this one stare that like, if he wants to like, I don't know, like kill us. I don't know. It's just very scary. We have kids from ages from a year old all the way to 20 years old at the house. Um, he scares visitors when we get them, like he'll take constant pictures of us. He'll cat call us through his cameras. He will just do anything possible to bother us. And I just really want him to stop. He doesn't only bother our family, he bothers other people. And it's just scary. And I really hope that you guys really do look into this because sometimes I just want to leave my own home. And I've been there since I was a baby. <laughs> I've walked to Bryant Park, enjoy this, those parks. I've fallen from those stairs in Bryant Park. And it's just scary when somebody comes in and destroys your childhood like that at such a young age. I, I can only imagine. And, and thank you for coming forward. And, and thanks for talking about this. And, and as we, as I said earlier, as we, yeah. dear mother, we will, you have the people in the room here hearing this story now, hearing it for the first time for the most part, and we will we will put our collective heads together and see what the next steps could be and what could be done. Okay. okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kristen Stifter. I'm um, I'm here today because I'm wondering why I'm getting nuisance uh, calls and service fees to my house. Um, I have a neighbor who calls about everything. I have police reports of very minimal things, and yet I'm getting fined by the city of Bloomington. I had talked to a retired police officer from Minneapolis who said, something is not right with this. Um, we are not calling the police, somebody else is. They're constantly calling. There's mental illness on both sides, I believe. And I wanna know, um, because I've talked to a couple of sergeants here at the Bloomington Police, and they can't tell me why this is being not mirrored. Why um, we don't call the police, they do. And then if we don't talk to the police, they're accusing us of abating or, or whatever you want to say. It's our right not to talk to the police. It always ends up in a big, huge mess. We're trying to end the problems with the neighbors. We have had situations in court where we agreed upon stipulations that were never signed. They were never carried out. They never did anything. We've had mediation, nothing ever comes of this stuff. So I wanna know who I need to talk to to find out why we are paying for them calling when there's mental illness definitely there. So, so I, I, I'm understanding you, you're the other side of this conversation this evening. Is it yes. okay? We have many, many accounts of not okay. enough evidence. This did not happen. You know, it's just the Bloomington police because we do not talk to them. We do not give them any information. This is becoming a big problem. I have over 11 cases here that were one was agreed on as a dis, uh, disorderly conduct. The rest of them have been dismissed or n nothing has been done of it. So I need somebody to help me go above this because HROs, when they end and then they're resubmitted over and over again, it's to the point, I even talked to the sheriff and said, what is the next point? Because we've had lawyers involved, we've had the downtown involved, we have Bloomington police involved, we don't get anywhere. I have a feeling. I, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. The thing I want to say is I think it's the other side is what needs to be held accountable. It's only on one side is being held accountable. And I think that's the problem. Why they can't end this completely, be done, move on. 
I, that's it. That's all I got to say. Completely. There are two sides to every story. Correct. I, I have the. I would recommend that you. Share, I would recommend that you share your story with the Bloomington Police and and, and fill in that other side of the story. That would be my recommendation. But can I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Very quickly, Skip. What what are you being fined for? What are they? This is citations or incident. Supposedly him being shaken his stuff in front. I was sitting right on the couch. We were inside our house. It was nine forty five. She was outside power washing the house or the, the driveway down the street. And he just wanted to document it because we were going to call at 10 o'clock and say noise complaint. I have two small children and they can't sleep when there's noise. They have their radios gone. They have cars idling in the street. They have cars parking, looking directly into my bay window. This case that I'm fined for the $250 says that she's looking into my window. He is not naked, fully dressed. I'm sitting next to him on the couch. This is ridiculous. There's mental illness that needs to be addressed and Bloomington police needs to hold both sides accountable. I appreciate your being here tonight. I appreciate the, the you know, Sorry, I took yes. some time then. Thank you very much. And, and as I said, besides the story, I, I share your side of the story with the Bloomington police to, to really fill in the blanks here. Can you give me a name of somebody that I can trust? Because Wallowitz, I can't trust. I trust every one of those Bloomington police officers. Very, very highly. Set up a time. Hmm. I saw at least another couple hands. Uh, we go ahead. Okay. I'm a little Wenzel. I'm a long term resident of the city, and my concern is the Nine Mile Creek corridor off of Central Park that is, in my mind, going to be butchered to allow bikers. Right now, we have a you know, a nice paved walking park, a nice paved park uh, walking area. We have it. The creek on one side, and we have a steep slope on the other side. The thought now is this this walk this walking area is going to be widened to allow bikers as well and access down to the uh, down to the river. But to do that, you have to chop into a slope that is extremely steep. It's my background. We're talking about now. It's about about a one to one slope. It's 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 nice. It has nice vegetation on it. it has trees. We're going to have to go in there and chop that slope back. Gonna have to bring in a backhoe and dump trucks. The bridges there aren't big enough to support it. You have to have new bridges and new supports to even bring in the equipment to do the work. Then you're gonna wind up with a slope that's bare, maybe three to one slope, that could easily easily have caused slides in the future, and it's gonna ruin a lot of the, the canopy that is there now of the trees for those of us who like walking for a few bikers. And so I'm I'm very concerned that many of us are very concerned that we're ruining a nice walking area, an area that many people enjoy walking along and just maybe relaxing in. And now, Lowell, because I know you with Restore the Nine, I know that you know full well that we're just getting started in the planning process for this, that there's not been a decision made to butcher anything. There's not been any final decisions made on this. We're starting to gather community input on this, what people want, what they would like to see, how best to address this. We're at the start of the process right now. Best thing you do is end it. It, it. It's not a. It's well, the voters of Bloomington approved a restoration fund for the Nine Mile Creek area to get rid of the invasive species, to to uh, shore up the the shoreline, to to just to do the work down there that needs to be done. That hasn't been done since the first time they went through and actually put those paths in, which I wouldn't consider a butchering. They they had to do some work to get those paths in in the first place. We're just starting this this progress process. It's just underway now. I encourage you to be involved with it. Last question, if a biker hits a walker in the future, because that's what's going to happen with that path, does the city get sued? Well, uh, you know, we've got a, a dual use track down in the river valley, and I don't think we've heard a con uh, concern about that yet. We haven't, I haven't heard of a biker hitting a, a walker down there yet. So, folks, it is 20 after 6, and I know there are still people who would like to speak. I know some of your concerns are evergreen. So uh, we could we could continue this conversation, but we really do need to get downstairs for our 630 meeting. Apologize that we went long. We just had a lot of folks and, and a lot of issues that we had to discuss this night this evening. Come back next time. We'll, we'll definitely get you on the uh, agenda right away and appreciate everybody being here tonight. So thank you so very much. Council, I look for a motion to adjourn this evening. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Well, you would. Moved 7-0. We're adjourned. Thank you much for being here, everyone. You got to hustle on down.